All right, so as expected, guys, Apple just dropped iOS 26 Public Beta 3, and as expected, it is built off of Beta 6, so that's what we're going to go off of here. Some of the downloads might be a little different in size. I've seen them all the way from 1.5 gigs to 10 gigs. Our download was over 10 gigabytes for the second time in a row. Kind of strange, but yeah, just wanted to call that out there. Next thing before we jump into this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and thumbs up this video if you're interested in getting these wallpapers. We will be doing a weekly series on Sundays called Apple Rewind where we recap everything from the week and drop those download links for all of these wallpapers. You guys have left a number of comments down below and seem to love them, so I know you guys want them. That's where you will find them going forward. So, first things first. We did get a new onboarding screen when you first installed iOS 26 beta 6 or public beta 3. It is very clean and nice and very organized to call out the changes to liquid glass and some of the changes for controls as you can see here. Beyond that though, we do now have, as crazy as it is, new ringtone. So if you go under sounds and haptics, and then select ringtone, let me go ahead and do this. You can see you now will have under reflection six new tones. You have your default one, buoyant, dreamer, pond, pop, reflected, and surge. And then there is a seventh one down below called little bird. So I'll play a quick clip for this. I'm not gonna go through all of them for you um, for a long time just to keep this video short, but yeah. That is Little Bird, then Surge. Reflected. Pop. Pond. Dreamer is very nice. Buoyant, and of course the original default one that everyone knows at this point. So those are some of the new ringtones finally brought to us in beta 6 and public beta 3. One other neat little tweak in settings, let me actually back out of this really quick, is finally we have liquid glass in our toggles. This was shown off and it was actually available in some settings if you long pressed. So if you wanted to use volume up for burst, you can see now that liquid glass effect on the toggle. But again, this was available. You just had a long press and hold to drag. So now it is on by default. I think that animation does look very nice and fits exactly how liquid glass was meant to be designed. You can also see in the music app, since we've been talking about this quite a bit, the liquid glass is more, um, it's more clear. You can really see it at the bottom when you start scrolling over darker letters and images. You can see how it operates. And what's really cool is look how neat now liquid glass looks when you swipe over an image. Instead of taking the whole image and turning it red, what's highlighted, it is more dynamic and will only do partially selections until you actually let go and select where you want to go. I think that looks really neat. And again, just that attention to detail uh, is very, very cool. Um, one thing that isn't good, and I should have talked about this in settings earlier, I apologize, guys. Uh, in the camera app here, talking about controls here, we did lose that new toggle that we just got in beta 5 uh, for mode switching. It is gone. I thought that was a great addition, but we probably should have known better from what Apple would give us choices for. Unfortunately, it no longer exists. I'm going to guess that it probably won't be back in beta 7, but just something to keep in mind. If you liked it, now we're stuck with the new way. You can't go back to the classic mode switching. In the Photos app, it did have a new splash screen as well. No new features, it was just talking about everything we already had live in the, uh, in the prior betas. And they did also change in these settings some verbiage. So if you go into the phone app, at the bottom here, we now have changes to how things are written. Hold assist detection 
is now here instead of detect call waiting. This makes it sound a little clearer, makes more sense here. So that is going to be that. And then call filtering, I think something changed here with unknown callers. It just Apple made it a little bit easier to understand what you're selecting. And aside from that, the animations have just been sped up so much. It looks really, really nice now. I have to say the way Apple, it has to be one and a half times right now because it is so much quicker opening up apps. It's actually pretty crazy. And if you do a side by side comparison, it is even more blatantly obvious exactly how not only is the animation different where it looks like it's a genie sliding down into the app drawer or wherever the app's coming from, but it actually just loads so much quicker. I have a feeling Apple might tune it down a little bit, but this is just my guess. Anyways, so this is going to now start us on our weekly release cycle for a couple of weeks before the RC goes live. So let's talk about when to expect the next version. So what I'm assuming here is we will get a beta 7 and a public beta 4 next week on the 18th, most likely around the 19th or 20th. And then we'll receive beta 8 the week after on the week of the 25th. And then we'll probably skip a week because on September 8th, as crazy as it is, I know we're close already, that is rumored to be the iPhone event on Tuesday, September 9th, where they announce all the new Apple Watches, iPhone 17 series devices, and we would receive the RC at that time, and then possibly a second RC on Friday before the public release, most likely the week after on the 15th, with the new iPhones coming on September 19th. It's very close. Obviously, this is all speculation until Apple officially announces it. But from historical purposes and what we would assume to be the case, this should be a relatively reliable timeline here. So aside from that, there were a ton of changes in the release notes, some known issues, some fixes. We're not even going to jump into them all. You can go to developer.apple.com to see all those. It is a lengthy list. But for now, that is all, guys. What do you think about iOS 26 in these most recent betas? They've come a long way and have definitely been more stable. Performance, battery life, huge improvements, more so in this build for battery life. It has been very consistent in the short time we've used it, which is a good sign considering usually in the first 24 hours, it's draining quicker while it readjusts to your usage but we have had no issues actually with this at 95% battery health. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.